You're listening to the Groundbreaking Podcast from the Global Ag Tech Initiative. The Global Ag Tech Initiative is the catalyst for connecting, engaging, and fostering dialogue in global food production with technology as the foundation for driving innovation and solutions. The Groundbreaking Podcast brings forth voices across the industry to discuss trends, best practices, and innovative ideas driving agriculture forward in a rapidly changing world. Thanks for joining us. Welcome to the Groundbreaking Podcast. Uh, This is Heather Tunstall with Global Ag Tech Initiative, and I'm here with Kevin Krieg, the Business Development Manager for Intellinaire. Welcome, Kevin. Yep. Thank you for having me, Heather. Great to have you. And we have a couple questions today. We're going to be talking about data usage, and this is something that you're very familiar with, obviously, with your business, but also you talked quite a bit about during our vision conference and in our executive primer. I um, want to talk a little bit more about that with you and kind of dig into some additional questions here. So before we get started, uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about Intellinaire and what you do? Yeah, so Intellinaire is a data analytics company. So essentially, we take remote sense data, whether that's from airplanes, drones, satellites, and we bring that together with machine data, uh, weather data, soil data. We're able then to generate out insights during the season. So what's happening to your crop, what things are impacting the yield. And then at the end of the season as well, we can look back and be able to tell you what exactly contributed to your yield or where did you give up some yield? And then how does that compare to others if you want to be able to benchmark that as well? So those are some ways that we can use that data. We can be able to see things in the fields that you can't see just by scouting them manually or just even yield data doesn't tell the complete story. So we're able to put that together and help you understand what impact are the yield and then how to make changes going forward. Great. And how long have you been with Intellinaire? I've been with Intellinaire for a little over two and a half years now. So my background came from a lot of uh, machines. So I was with John Deere and CNH for a while in the precision egg side. So I have a, a big background in, in precision egg equipment side of it as well. So this is fun being able to bring that together with the uh, artificial intelligence and the remote sensing things as well. Which, uh, you know, we've heard so much about recently, especially the AI buzz. Everybody's talking about it and how it impacts a lot of the data usage for growers and farmers and even, you know, suppliers as well. So really, really looking forward to your perspective here on this. You bet. Yep. Thank you. So let's let's dive in first with some of the key areas that farmers use data. How how are they using it to inform their business and daily decisions? Yeah, so I mean, well, that's a that's a very good question and probably one that's interesting, right? Of like, how much are they truly using data to be able to drive some of those decisions, right? But you know, any business data is used from the financial perspective as well. Then so no different from a farm perspective. And then somewhat into grain marketing. And then the area where we focus a lot and where we think there's a lot of potential is in the agronomy side of stuff. So that's where a lot of the data. But when you look at the data as well, right, I mean, it's it's pretty much a rear view mirror look at what has happened, right? So that's really where we're trying to be able to figure out how can we use that data yeah, to inform what did happen and what led to it. But then how can we help you be more predictive on what you can do different in order to address that going forward, right? Because as as growing a crop is very complicated, there's a lot of different interactions there that the data will tell you uh, exactly that. But that's where we're excited about AI to be able then to help predict kind of what things could happen as well or where things could go on your uh, on your crops going forward. So when you're gathering data, what does that look like, particularly for things like yield prediction? And how do you use that? What's what's going on right now in the realm of data gathering? Yeah, so that's one of the things like that we're excited about is the yield prediction that we can do. So kind of being able to see, you know, based on the past performance of that, based on the imagery that we have, we can take that now and be able to have this is what is, you know, really exciting about artificial intelligence is that we could take a whole bunch of data, right? And we have 500 terabytes of data a year that we collect. With that data, we can train it then to be able to predict what the yield will be for corn. So now we have the ability to be able to start giving you a prediction of your corn yield for each individual field. 
Now, we found that that is very accurate as long as the weather and everything stays the same from that point forward, but we can also update it every 10, 12 days that we get a flight as well. So that's been given our customers and, and you know a lot of ability to use data to make even better grain marketing decisions. Last year was a great example, right? It was It was very dry, but the crop was doing a lot better than most people thought in their minds. So that was one of the things where then we could help them understand Hey, your crop is really going to be, you know, 220 a set of maybe 180 that you're thinking. And for their marketing plans, where if they say if their marketing advice is, you know, have 50% of your corn sold, well, that's a big difference between, you know, 90 bushels versus 110 bushels, especially when we look back and know what the price was this last summer versus where it's at now, right? So those are things where the power of artificial intelligence, the power of being able to predict things going forward is going to help it make a lot better decisions on the farm of what you're going to do to that crop and how you're going to market it as well. Yeah, sort of that looking in the rear view to see better through the windshield kind of situation. Exactly, yes. Yes. Wonderful. Okay. So you're talking a little bit about how it's being used, but what is the prevalence? How much are farmers using data right now in agriculture? Are they struggling with the concept? Yeah, I would say so how much they're using it, that that varies widely, right? But one of the things that's really hit me this last couple of weeks here as we're out talking to customers is that, you know, one of the top of the mind things is commodity prices, right? Yeah. Margins are tight. Now then, so you hear that, right? And that is a challenge for a lot of farmers out there. But then we have other customers that have, I would say, embraced the data and how to use that to make better informed decisions on their farm. So they're now, you know, in my mind, they're positioned a lot better to know, uh, you know, what they can do on their farm to maximize their ROI. So one example that I like to to share that, you know, when we're looking at, you know, the cost of production, you know, the biggest impact on the yield for corn, you know, the top three that really make up 70% of the corn yield is the weather and nitrogen and the hybrid. And then really those interactions of how those things go together. So we have a nitrogen monitoring service as part of our solution as well. So for our customers that have the ability and have made the changes of their operation to be able to put on that late season nitrogen, they've been able to cut back uh, their in seat, their upfront nitrogen. And so we have examples where customers have, you know, hold back their nitrogen at plant it, monitoring that weather, monitoring that crop loss due to nitrogen and then not have to necessarily apply additional nitrogen to match that weather with it. But now in the case of last year, there was a customer that had pulled back some of that nitrogen. It was dry up until, you know, the end of June, right? About July 2nd is when the rain started coming into that area. Well, then oh, we were able to alert them that, hey, now their crop has taken off. It's now going to be limited by nitrogen. And they can make a decision then to apply a nitrogen with their late season fungicide. And that essentially was able to, you know, still maintain and grow their yield. But that was an off year from others where other years, basically what we're hearing from our customers or retailers is basically only about three out of every 10 years do they need to do that late season nitrogen. Now, there's a great way to use data to be able to match up what the weather is giving you with what the hybrid, what the corn needs with the right amount of nitrogen to really strike that good balance and give them a good ROI. Okay. And, you know, talking a little bit about sort of the awareness and the education around that data, let's think a little bit through what does that look like when a farmer is saying, okay, I need to be using this data and form my decisions. I have different time periods that are, are going to be imperative here. How do they start that education and onboarding with them, not only for themselves, but also for their team? Yeah, well, that's the key to it right there, Heather, is that team. So, I mean, what they need to do, it, in my mind and where I've seen it work work really well, is committing to using the data to be able to make those decisions, committing to be able to take action on that data when they do see something, right? So right. those are the key things as far as from a from a farmer's mindset to be able to say, yes, I'm going to commit to using the data and then I'm going to make the changes in my operation that allows me that flexibility 
to be able to, you know, pull those different levers throughout the season to be able to either, you know, pull back the spend or spend more money based on what the weather is giving me to maximize my ROI. So that's kind of from that aspect of it. And then I think the other thing that we see where this is really successful of using the data is when the farmers get everybody in their team, as you described it, on the system, looking at the same data sets, sharing and collaborating that. We see a lot of examples where, you know, the hybrid, you know, the, the seed salesperson will see something maybe a little bit different than the chemical person, right? The, the agronomist that's looking at it as well might see something different. So when you can get them all collaborating together on a platform that has that information available, that's when it becomes more powerful for the farmer to know that, hey, they're not just making this decision themselves. They have their whole team engaged in it. Everybody is looking at it and they're coming up with the best decision possible. Yeah. And certainly the team is going to play an integral role in making sure that everything is operating uh, the way it should be. In addition, you know, how important is it that they look into technologies that integrate and kind of work together for uh, a more seamless operation? Oh, I mean, that's that's really, really important, right? So that's one of the things that I I see out there is that, that you have to have lots of different sources of information coming together. There's just no way that any one solution has everything that you need in it, right? So really be looking for ones that can collaborate and bring other information together to be able to you know make that happen. I mean, that's one of the things like that we're really proud of at Intellinair is working with and collaborating with many different companies to be able to have our piece of value there that just basically complements a lot of other pieces of information and to be able to give it is a nice, easy interface to be able to get to that information and take that data from just raw data into actual information that's actionable that they could do. So it takes multiple sources. It takes a lot of collaboration uh, to get that done. Yeah. And you nailed it right there when you're talking about taking the data and pulling the actionable insights out of it and, and doing something with it. So I guess that that asks my next question is how does he or she know what to do with that data once they have it? What's the next step once they gather the data? Yeah. So so that's really where uh, when things that we try to do is to be able to, yeah, to put that into things that they can do this season, right? But that's where then consulting with, and I would say, you know, one of the one of the great things about what we do and some of these in season, you know, the the monitoring of the crop is you can't put the crop back in the ground after you've harvested it. So right. in the past, right, most of the most of the aha moments came at the end of the season when you're looking at the yield monitor uh, and seeing the yield data, but then you wonder what the heck happened in there and now you can't go back and figure it out, right? One of the great, you know, things that from this year that we had was we have a, a nutrient deficiency alert. We're in the season; it basically it fires for any corn, soybeans that are having a nutrient deficiency issue. We don't tell you the root cause of what it is, whether you know what nutrient it is or what could be causing it. We had a customer this year that was using our service and using a, a competitor as well, evaluating them both. Very good farmers, right? They, you know, they keep track of everything. Well, we started seeing a nutrient deficiency alert in season. It was one of those things where they're like, they walked the field, the other technology solution did not indicate anything was going on. So I would, they essentially kind of wrote it off. They're like, mm, this, you know, I don't know how much I can trust this alert. Well, then when the, they were combining and the yield monitor started tanking, right? They're like, uh-oh, so they out and at that point, you know, at least they could do some work. Then they dug up some roots and noticed that it was rootworm that was becoming resistant to their corn, the resistant mm. rootworm. Okay. Then informs them right and tells them, hey, now I know that I do have some resistant rootworm in this field. I can now then inform my rotation or I can change a hybrid. If I still want to go to corn on corn next year. I can have a different hybrid that is uh, going to be placed there as more, re you know, more resistant to the rootworm as well, or doing the insecticide or something at planting as well. So those are the types of things that we can see, right, to be able to then, you know, take action on it. Where it's not just, you know, it's not just low NDVI, low crop health in these areas. We can specifically say it's a nutrient deficiency, and then that gets you on the right path to be able to figure out then what is going on. And ideally, right, we, you know, unfortunately we have 
situation like that where people the first year they don't necessarily fully trust right they have it a hundred percent committed to trust in the data uh but now in future years they will and then when they do say things like that they can get out ahead of it as well and make the changes in their operation in that year to have a positive impact on it so that's the the things where you know being able to chart it into that actual insight is key so, Kevin, we're talking a lot about uh, the benefits to farmers and how a whole solution is really what would be beneficial for them, right? So with that, what do you have to say to other tech providers and tech enablers and OEMs within the industry as a whole? What can we all do to make it easier for the farmer? That's a great question. So I think there's the the probably the biggest thing is really being more open and sharing of the data across all of these different systems, right? So that is where uh, I see the biggest potential. And some of the examples is when we can have that machine data, right? We can then, you know, look at that and be able to tell a farmer exactly at what planting speed and what conditions gave them the best emergence. And we all know that emergence correlates then to yield. So now you can look at, well, how does that planter and how does that planter speed, how does the tillage depth, all of those different things impact their final yield. Then you couple that on the, you know, on the egg input provider side, how does that genetics of that hybrid perform in different conditions and different environmental conditions? How does the rain or the weather impact all of those things working together as well? And the only way we can do that and even build from that further to be able to take all of this information that does come in from all of these different sources and actually give the farmer, you know, in real language, information that helps them make a better decision for their operation and the impact that is through having that data. And so that's really where we have to continue to keep making that data available and work together as an industry to benefit that farmer gets the old adage, right? They, you know, all uh, rising water helps all boats, right? So if we can kind of do that, we can then help all the farmers be able to do a better job of seeing exactly where the things that are impacting their yield and helping them make the best decisions for their operations and their viability going forward. Excellent. Yeah. Collaboration is key. We've heard, we've heard that so much recently and it's so true and we're seeing some of the benefits already from organizations working together. So thank you for that. Kevin, thank you so much for taking the time to talk with us today on the Groundbreaking Podcast. Uh, we appreciate you. And if anybody would like to learn more about what Intellinair is doing, go to Intellinair.com. Learn all about the data and how to use it on farm. Um, or if you are a tech provider, how to work together within the industry and keep this moving. Thank you again, Kevin. You bet. Well, thank you, Heather. And thanks for uh, helping uh, promote this and helping promote the industry coming together and collaborating. So this is great. So thank you. Thank you for listening to today's episode of Groundbreaking Podcast from the Global Ag Tech Initiative. You can subscribe to our podcast at globalagtechinitiative.com by clicking on the podcast tab in the menu or by subscribing to our channel on iTunes or wherever you find your podcasts. Don't forget to subscribe to the Global Ag Tech Initiative's weekly e-newsletter, The Signal, for all things ag tech. Visit globalagtechinitiative.com and click on the Signal subscribe button on the right-hand side of the home page. Of course, you can also find us on LinkedIn. Just search for Global Ag Tech To get even more in tune with the global ag tech space and be active in its advancement, consider joining the Global Ag Tech Alliance. More information on how to join the Alliance is available on globalagtechinitiative.com. The Global Ag Tech Initiative and the Groundbreaking Podcast are produced by Meister Media Worldwide. I'm Heather Tunstall, co-chair for the Global Ag Tech Initiative. Thank you for joining us today.